So I've got a blast from the past. An article from the New York Times dated May 14th, 2011, entitled Secret Desert Force Set Up by Blackwater's Founder. Now, out there in Abu Dhabi, in the United Arab Emirates, a plane carrying dozens of Colombian men touched down in the capital. They were whisked through customs by an Emirati intelligence officer. Then the group boarded an unmarked bus and drove about 20 miles to a military complex in the desert. The Colombians had entered the United Arab Emirates posing as construction workers. In fact, they were soldiers emphasis added for a secret American-led mercenary army being built by Eric Prince, the billionaire founder of Blackwater Worldwide, with $529 million from the UAE. Apparently, Mr. Prince resettled there in 2010 after his security business faced some legal problems here in the U.S. He was hired by the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi to put together an 800-member battalion of foreign troops for the UAE. This is all according to former employees on the project. American officials and corporate documents obtained by the New York Times goes on to state that the force is intended to conduct special operations missions inside and outside the country, the country being the UAE. Defend oil pipelines Russian warplanes are targeting the ISIS oil empire in Syria in an attempt to sever a main source of its astonishing income. RT's Lizzie Phelan reports from Damascus. The Russian general staff has said that over the last 24 hours, they've struck 500 oil trucks transporting uh, oil from Syria to refineries in Iraq, and that this has considerably cut down the militants' capability for uh, illegally exporting oil and consequently getting revenues from the contraband, which is the single biggest source of funding for the Islamic State. Now and skyscrapers from terrorist attacks and to put down internal revolts. Let me repeat. And put down internal revolts. Now, such troops could be deployed if the Emirates faced unrest in their crowded labor camps or were challenged by pro-democracy protests like those sweeping the Arab world that year being the Arab Spring. So, by pro-democracy protests, they're talking about protests by a country's civilian population. Now, the rulers of the United Arab Emirates, they don't feel that their military is adequate enough. And they also hoped that the troops could blunt the regional aggression of Iran, the country's biggest foe. How long has there even been a UAE, i.e. the United Arab Emirates? How long? The training camp located on an Emirati base, they're calling an Emirati base named Zayed Military City. 
it's hidden behind concrete walls with barbed wire there are photographs and I will leave links in the about section of course um, there are photographs showing rows of identical yellow temporary buildings used for barracks and mess halls and guess what else a motor pool we turn now to a question being asked by American authorities after so many videos and images of ISIS. U.S. counterterrorism officials asking why are ISIS fighters driving so many similar trucks and where are they getting them from? Look at these images. ISIS fighters riding in Toyota pickups and Toyota Land Cruisers. Authorities now asking the automaker, can they help officials figure out why ISIS has so many Toyotas? Uh-huh. A motor pool which houses Humvees and fuel trucks uh-huh what a quinky dink I mean it is December 10th 2015 and uh, they sure do have a lot in common with the embattled ISIS, don't they? Well, these Colombians that were hired to be military contractors for the fledgling country of the United Arab Emirates along with guess what else South African and other foreign troops seems as if they were trained by retired American soldiers and veterans of the German and British special operations units and the French Foreign Legion according to the former employees and American officials they're pointing out that in outsourcing critical parts of their defense to mercenaries the soldiers of choice for medieval kings Italian Renaissance dukes and uh, African dictators <laughs> uh, the Emiratis have begun a new era in the boom in wartime contracting which really began after or admittedly began after September 11th 2001 and by relying on a force largely created by Americans uh, well it seems that uh, they have introduced a volatile element into that region which was already part in the pun combustible and you've you've got to think that you know the United States is widely viewed with suspicion over there the United Arab Emirates which they're calling an autocracy autocracy automatic they're saying they're closely allied with the United States and American officials indicated that the battalion program had some support in Washington had some support in Washington quote the Gulf countries and the UAE in particular don't have a lot of military experience why because they're brand spanking new countries that's why it would make sense if they looked outside their borders for help it says that was in quote and that was supposedly said by one Obama administration official who knew of that operation okay quote 
they might want to show that they are not to be messed with, end quote. Hmm. Still, it is not clear whether the project has the United States' official blessing. Well, that just brings um, back memories of when um, the Arab Spring started. At first, they looked like genuine protests. Well, that just brings... Um, back memories of when um, the Arab Spring started. At first, they looked like genuine protests, didn't they? To us outsiders, especially on CNN, uh, they they look like genuine protests at first, but then some of them turned into full-blown wars with thousands of innocent civilians being killed in the process. Well, that begs the question, um, so who was fighting the wars? There, Duh. Why not hire who hires independent contractors to be militants on an on-call basis? I'm sure they're probably 1099 for God's sake, if they're an American. <laughs> 